Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Today I'm going to do a little bit more thrift flipping because I have another pair of pants and another top that I want to upcycle and turn into something that I'm going to love. So I'm glad you're with me today. Let me show you what I have and let me share my process with you. So first of all, the pants, there's nothing wrong with them. The fit is really nice and the length is even good, but they were hemmed by somebody who didn't know how to sew, I think. And so they were done with that, like, mm, they were done with that glue on stuff, which, you know, no judgment here if you don't know how to hem a pair of pants. Uh, but the problem is, is that um, these pants are a bit tapered. See, they didn't cut off the original hem. They just turned it up once and used that glue stuff to stick it down. But when it's tapered, then the circumference of the inner part is smaller than the circumference that you're gluing it to. And so it made all of these little lumps and bumps in the hem and looked, it just looked a little depressed. So I'm going to be putting in a hem there. Uh, I am going to take them just a little bit shorter. I'm kind of enjoying like a little Audrey Hepburn kind of look these days. And so it is just a normal hem I'm going to do, but I thought, well, I might as well make some little special detail that I can share with you. So I'm just going to make a little notch in the back of the hem to have like a little V at the back, which I think will be cute. It's pretty easy to do that. Let me show you how. So the black pants are just a good basic. They fit nice. They feel great. So it's just that hem that I wanted to do. And I'll just make that little notch just for something a bit special. Then I have this kind of crazy top. It's this sheer fabric and it's got this pretty awesome embroidery around the neck. I kind of like that, um, but it's a very deep V. So I would definitely have to wear like a black camisole underneath it. But then the other crazy thing is these like handkerchief sleeves. So I think I might just tone the whole thing down by putting in just a more normal sleeve. So this one might just be a little too crazy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this work. That's my project for today. So let's jump right in. Okay, so I do want these a little bit shorter than they were originally hemmed. So let's say an inch and a half from the original fold. So this is what's left. Now this, all this yucky gluey stuff is gonna get caught into my new hem. But let me just show you, when you have a situation like this, when you're hemming ta tapered pants, this new edge where I'm folding it up to, this is smaller than what I wanna be sewing it to. So this is the trick. You just open up the seam a little bit and when you when you hem it by hand, you would come across and down and back up. So it has to open up there, otherwise you get these puckers on the outside that show and look kind of terrible. I would do it on both sides, just that little bit of an opening. Good. So now with it open like that, I'm just going to resurge both of my edges. So now on the back side of both legs, I'm going to find the center of that back hem and put a pin. And I'm just going to double check that that is in fact the back. Yep. So now normally you would just turn that to the inside and you'll sew around, but I'm going to turn it right sides together just to start with, just to make that little notch that I was telling you about. I had allocated for a three centimeter or inch and a quarter hem. So I'm going to just pin that there, inch and a quarter, three centimeters, which is sort of standard for a hem. So first I'm just going to mark a point at the center, right at the bottom of the surging, draw a line there. Okay. And then I'm going to come out a quarter inch on each side and draw a little upside down V right up to that point. Okay, so despite all this gluey stuff, hopefully you can still see I've drawn like a triangle like that. And I'm just gonna sew that and then flip it right side out. Just to be clear, the wide part of the triangle is at the folded bottom edge, right? And I'm gonna just come right up in here. When I get close to that surging, that's where I'll pivot. back down and 
So you have to be pretty sure that you're happy with the length and everything because we're going to cut right into that now. There's no turning back here. And I have to cut almost to the end of that triangle. I want to get really close to the point without cutting my stitching. So I want to be able to open it out flat like that. And then I should be able to flip that out nice and pointy. And that looks good. If it was binding here at all, if I had any puckers in there, I would know I'd have to snip a little bit more. Perfect. That's a cute little detail for the back hem, don't you think? Nice. And now I'm just going to hem it more or less like normal by hand and just start pinning my way around with that same level. If you kind of tug it, you'll see that that side seam needs to split open. Otherwise it's going to be binding and pulling that hem. So just let the side seam open as much as it needs to. Good. Okay, so this little notch part is of course totally optional. It's just a little extra detail. So now to sew this hem, I'm using a needle and a single thread. And at these little V's, the um, where the side seam has to flare out because the tapered leg, I'm gonna be sewing that right down to, to the seam allowance that's underneath it. Good. And then at the bottom where I, I don't want that opening to keep opening, so I'm just gonna put a couple stitches across. And then sew my way back up that opening. Good. So I just sew down and up and just to the seam allowance. Nothing is showing on the right side. Okay, now that I'm off the seam allowance, with a hand sewn hem, you just pick up one thread on the good part of the leg, or on the outside part of the leg, and come back under your step, under your serging. Pick up one thread on the outside, back under your serging. It takes a little bit of patience just to make sure you're just getting that one thread. If you take a big stitch there, you're gonna see your stitching. So just one thread back under your serging. It's, it's actually pretty quick. It doesn't take that long to do a hand sewn hem, but it is so much nicer. If you didn't have a serger, probably the easiest is that you would just turn a quarter inch hem, sew that down, and then you would go on with what I'm doing here where you would then do your hand sewn hem that, that way. Back to where I started and so doing my knot, just one last little stitch, go back through the loop, do that a second time. Good. So there's one leg done, that looks nice. Good. Good. I haven't even pressed this yet, but isn't that cute? That's just a nice little de a detail at the back of the pan. And that hand sewn hem, you just don't see a single stitch on the outside. It's just so much nicer. And once I press this, it's going to be even nicer. Beautiful. I love it. So this one might just be a little too crazy. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this work. I don't know. I might have bitten off more than I can chew here. And I'll be making the sleeves a little bit more normal. Then I don't have to... Uh, it's just crazy, isn't it? I gave it a good iron. It was The fabric was all kind of scrunched in and really sat funny and squishy. So once I ironed it, it laid so much nicer. So that's all good. But I had to make some tough decisions about this crazy embroidered V. It's just not working. The fabric is too light to support this heavy V. It sits off kilter and all weird and it's just unfortunately has to go. So first I'm just going to remove that V. So to unpick something like this, I am going to be just cutting off the very edge of the serging, just the very edge where the loops of thread form. Then you just have the two needle threads to pull out. Oh, this is just a three thread serge. I just need to find that one needle thread and pull that out. There. So that's that just that needle thread just whips right out once you've cut off the edge. Nice. Okay, I unpicked this whole V, and now with that gone, 
I'm going to pin together the side edges so that I can find the center and then I'm going to cut right down the center to the bottom of that V. And then I'm going to cut these down into a more normal size, into a more normal sleeve. Yeah, I'm going to reserve this red. It's going to go down the front. That'll be good. So when I cut this sleeve here, I want to be above the red. So this is a bit of a funny way to do it, but I know to make this into like a normal sleeve, I need to have this much more sleeve. If I make it like there. So I'm going to bring it down straight. Here we go. Nothing to lose. I'm going to unpick the rest of this red. Okay, so unpicking all of this red trim from that just took forever. So it's like a couple hours later now. Eek! And I'm just, it's so delicate now. It's, all the pins keep falling out. Um, but what I'm doing is I've got the two longest piece of red and I just have to join it at the shoulder seam to one of the shorter pieces. And then I'm going to be sewing that on. Yeah, kind of in kimono style. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I've joined the three pieces of red together. And I'm sewing this to the inside, to the wrong side of the body first. And then I'll wrap it and do the last stitch on the outside. And now I'm wrapping that over. It's already got the folded edge on there, so that's making it a bit easier. Wrapping it over and sewing it down. And this is just the inner seam of the sleeve. But I'm just going to do a French seam because it is really nice on a lightweight fabric like this. And if you don't have a surgery, you can do a French seam. So I'm putting now wrong sides together instead of right sides together. And I'm just going to sew a narrow seam. So both sleeves are sewn wrong sides together and then I'm going to trim that seam allowance down in half. Good. And now I'm turning the sleeve inside out so now it is right sides together like normal. And I'm going to sew that seam again and it'll just enclose the seam allowance. So as I go I just want to make sure that this that original first seam just comes right out to the edge. That's the inside of the seam where it's neatly finished and the outside of the seam kind of just looks normal but it's you don't you don't see surging showing through it's just a nice clean way to finish okay so now i'm going to do a narrow hem on the sleeves so to do that i'm not going to spend a long time um, pinning or even pressing first at the seam here i'm going to turn once and again just a small fold like that. It's a little bit even less than a quarter inch. It's just a double fold. I'm going to start by putting a back tack right there at the inner seam. As I make my way around the circle of the bottom of the sleeve, I'm just going to fold once and twice, tuck in any threads and raw edges, and then sew up on that inner folded edge. In one section at a time, just organize as you go. Tuck in any loose threads. This way of doing a narrow hem is really nice and easy when you've got a straight edge. If this was a curved edge at all, I'd have to break it down into two separate steps. The bottom edge of the armhole is already finished because remember it had the handkerchief sleeve. So I've surged the edge of the sleeve that still has to be set and I'm going to sew that in. My last little step, I'm going to make a couple of ties out of the last bit of red trim that I've got. And then right about here where it curves from the original V to that center front edge, I'm going to take that tie. I'm going to first of all sew it pointing towards the inside of the kimono. 
and then fold it out so it covers its own raw edge and will now be sticking out for us. That is everything done. I'm going to give everything a final press and then I'll try it all on and show you how it all turned out. That's my project complete for today. It's such a great feeling to take something that was being cast off and turn it into something that I'm just gonna love. So I know I'll wear this a lot. So I'm really glad you were along with me for the ride. Thanks for joining me. And if you liked today's video, please hit subscribe. Thanks so much, take care.